pi e and the Euler Masferoni constant gamma. Three numbers loved by math nerds like myself, and since I'm an integrals guy, I've solved some cool looking integrals resulting in these important constants like the ones in front of you. It's really nice to see pi and gamma together in that last integral, as it is to see pi and e, our two favorite transcendentals, in the form of a ratio for the second integral. And I also found this really cool infinite series that ties all three of them together quite nicely. And the fact that the left-hand side has the Riemann zeta function makes it look like the most epic thing I've ever seen as far as calculus results are concerned. But what about an integral? Surely there's an integral of something that results in all three numbers packed together quite nicely like the zeta series. Well, that's where me and my friend Andre come in. Independently, we both came up with integrals that resulted in a beautiful structure of pi, e, and lowercase gamma by playing around with the Mellon transform I found as part of my old videos. As expected, both our integrals are exactly the same thing, separated by a simple substitution. Andre also pointed out that the integral and the result already appear in a table of integrals by Prudnikov. So yeah, just as expected, somebody already beat us to the result, but that didn't take away any of the fun, so it's cool. So here's the integral in the form Andre showed me. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of the logarithm of the logarithm of 1 by x times 1 by 1 plus x squared dx. To solve this monstrous integral, let's make a substitution first. We're going to let log x equal to negative u, which implies that x equals e to the negative u. And this further implies that dx equals negative e to the negative u du. So what exactly is our integral in the u world? It is now an integral from where to where. So as x approaches 0, we have log x approaching negative infinity, so that means u will approach positive infinity. And as x approaches 1, we have log 1, which is 0, so that means as x approaches 1, we have u approaching 0. So we have now an integral from infinity to 0 of the logarithm of what exactly is log 1 by x? Well, log 1 by x is the negative of log x, so that means we're going to be left with a u term here, divided by 1 plus e to the negative u squared, and the differential element turns into e to the negative u du with a negative sign that, of course, we can get rid of if we switch up the limits of integration. So this is what the integral now looks like in the u world, which is pretty similar to the integral that I used to derive this result. So yeah, it's just one substitution that links my integral to Andre's. Anyway, let me rename all the u's back to x's because that doesn't alter the structure of the integral. It's a dummy variable, that is. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of log x times e to the negative x divided by 1 plus e to the negative x squared dx. And the structure here is suggestive of a geometric series expansion. We know that we can expand the reciprocal of 1 plus x as the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k times x to the k, provided that the absolute value of x is less than 1. But here we have e to the negative x, so yeah, that satisfies the convergence criteria. We have e to the negative x being less than 1 on this interval from 0 to infinity. So this can be expanded as the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times e to the negative kx. But wait, our integrand has a squared term for 1 plus e to the negative x. So to introduce that square, we're just going to differentiate with respect to x. So on differentiation, we have a negative sign because of the power rule, 1 plus e to the negative x now squared in the denominator. And because of the chain rule, we also have this negative e to the negative x term. So yeah, we have two negative signs canceling out. And we now have a sum over the, uh, the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k times negative k times e to the negative kx. And of course, this negative 1 next to the k term can be absorbed into all of these negative ones and write it as negative 1 to the k plus 1. 
And notice that because k is being multiplied with everything over here for the k equals zero term, we have a zero. So we can instead sum over the positive integers. So what we have here is the series expansion for that term over there in the integrand. But I'm not going to invoke that right now. I'd like to do something else first. The plan here is to define an integral function i of some parameter s as the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times e to the negative x divided by 1 plus e to the negative x squared dx. So if I differentiate this with respect to the parameter s, I get the derivative with respect to s being the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times the logarithm of x, because we're differentiating partially with respect to x. We're all familiar with the Leibniz rule. I u I've used it way too many times here on the channel. So we have e to the negative x as well here, 1 plus e to the negative x squared, and we know how to expand all of that as an infinite series. So all we have to do is plug in s equal to 1, and we're home free. That will be our target integral. So the derivative at s equals 1 equals our target integral. So the plan is to evaluate the structure and we'll get as a result of our integration a function of the parameter s and we're going to differentiate that parameter and plug in s equal to 1. So now that we have our integral function defined, we can invoke our series expansion. We're going to write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times this e to the negative x divided by 1 plus e to the negative x squared dx. And now invoking that geometric series expansion, we have the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k times e to the negative kx dx. Okay, cool. And this x term is independent of the index variable k, so we can just slip it inside the summation operator. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of the sum over k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k times e to the negative kx times x to the s minus 1 dx. So we can switch up the order of the summation and the integration operators by dominated convergence. So that means we have the sum over k of the integral from 0 to infinity. And these two terms here are independent of the variable x with respect to which we're integrating. So we can just pop those outside the integration operator. We have negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times e to the negative kx dx. And all we need is one substitution, and we'll get a very familiar function. So the substitution I'm talking about revolves around the argument of the exponential function here. We're going to let kx equal to u again. So this implies that x equals u by k, so dx equals du by k. In other words, i of s equals the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k times the integral, still from 0 to infinity, the limits are clearly not bothered by our transformation, of u to the s minus 1 divided by k to the s minus 1 and we now have e to the negative u, and the differential element is du divided by k. So multiplying out the k terms in the denominators, we get k to the s, or we could just cancel one of them outside. We'll get exactly the same thing anyway. So we have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k to the s minus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the s minus 1 times e to the negative u, du, which we immediately recognize as the gamma function. And that means we have gamma s times all of that stuff summed over k. And wait a second, we have gamma s. So that thing is independent of k. 
So that means we can just write it outside as a constant multiple to the sum. So we have gamma s times the sum over the positive integers k of negative one to the k plus one divided by k to the s minus one. And this thing here is another friend of ours, the Dirichlet eta function evaluated at s minus one. So all of that implies that our integral function i of s evaluates quite nicely to the product of the gamma function at s and the eta function at s minus one. So the plan was to evaluate the integral function and then whatever result we have being a function of the parameter s will be differentiated. So we have the derivative with respect to x uh, with respect to s being equal to gamma prime s times eta s minus one plus gamma s times eta prime s minus one. And we need s to be equal to one here. So this implies that i of one, which is our target integral i, equals gamma prime one times a to zero plus gamma one, which is one factorial, which is one. So that's just one times the derivative of the a to function at zero. And here are the values we need. The derivative of the gamma function at one is the negative of the euler mascheroni constant eta zero is one half, and the derivative of the eta function at zero is one half of log pi by two. So all of this implies that i equals uh, negative Euler-Mascheroni constant divided by two plus one half of the logarithm of pi by two. So we can factor out a one half term over here. That means we're left with negative Euler-Mascheroni plus log pi by two. But wait a minute, we can write this thing here as the logarithm of e to the Euler-Mascheroni constant, which is cool. So we have one half of log pi by two uh, minus log e to the Euler-Mascheroni constant. So using the properties of the logarithm, what we have is this beautiful result of i being equal to one half the logarithm of pi divided by twice the Euler Mascheroni, con uh, twice e to the Euler Mascheroni constant, which is a beautiful result indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.